What's goody fellas and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a Kansas rebuild, a team we haven't done in a very long time. They're coming in 84 overall, 86 offense, 85 defense. They are considerably better than the last time I rebuilt them. In fact, the last time I did rebuild them, they had Puka Williams Jr. as their running back. At the time, he was an all Big 12 first team member. As a freshman, I think he played his sophomore year and then... I think some drama happened and I remember the Bengals signing him as a wide receiver funnily enough and uh, he eventually got cut as a wide receiver as well. So yeah, it's probably been three years, maybe even four years since I've rebuilt Kansas as a school. With March Madness just ending, I kind of wanted to do a primarily basketball related school anyway. So this works out well. Three star school, we do have the updated Big 12 as per usual. And we're just going to get all our traditional stuff here. Nothing different. Nothing going to mix it up. So I'm actually going to go with Daylight. Uh, we do want to get our running back a bit better this time around. They run a pro offense. So I typically, when I do a rebuild, I run with the team's traditional offense. Not their defense, though. And being a pro, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that we want to try and establish the run pretty early on in every single game. So we have Devin Neal. We also have Daniel Heshaw Jr., Pretty decent. Both of them are sophomores as well. All of our running backs are sophomores. I did notice Jalen Daniels is an 88 junior. Yeah, I do not know anything about this Kansas team. I haven't really paid attention to it. We do have a freshman wide receiver, Tanaka Scott. Yeah, not a lot of freshmen from what I can see. A lot of seniors. So this first year might be a little bit rough. We're only a three-star to start out anyway. And then not only that, it looks like we are losing pretty much our entire team. I'd say a good 45% of the squad is leaving and we're probably gonna go down to a one-star school depending on how we go we have two open weeks so conference play looks like ucf houston byu so all the new teams joining the big 12 we have them straight away three out of the four and then we also have the fourth team cincinnati here as well that is a very tough schedule for anybody uh, a strength of schedule i just don't know if little kansas is gonna be able to survive they do look a lot better like i said than last time i rebuilt them Conference Prestige is a B plus. I wonder if that's gone up because we added all these good schools. Another thing to note is we are above the Pac-12. I would like to jump in front of the ACC. So the better we do, you know, the better it's going to look. Pro Potential is a D plus. I would have to hard disagree there. I mean, I get it. We just joined as Kansas, but C minus. They are really not giving us anything to work with here. It's going to be rough. Only three stars to start out as well. well I don't think we're going to be able to build a big 12 contending team out of three stars not with the updated at least you know we did get rid of texas and oklahoma which is that's great for us but at the same time there's a massive kryptonite in the fact that we added four really good schools that we could easily lose to and we have all four of them on our schedule as well okay this is not it i'm sorry everybody that wants to come here that is somewhat decent that's a four star high three star caliber player is a freaking running back I can't work with that at all. Middle linebacker here. We got a tackle. I guess I'll take that even though he's a Juco. We're going to have to rock out with 16. Low lock cheese. I don't like relying on low lock cheese. But the thing is, those first couple years, you kind of have to bend the rules in your favor a little bit in order to at least keep up with the relentless CPU. I do not need this many running backs, but whatever. Hopefully these cornerbacks, linebackers and such, even though they're really low overall, can be something in the foreseeable future. Maybe at 80 overall by the senior season, something nice. Let me go ahead and get these scholarships out the way. If you're a high 60, I guess I can make an exception this first year. Not that even there's a lot of high 60s. We've got Steve Archie. A, a running back that low is just destined to fail though. That's the thing. Bryce Vincent will take that. We're going to be weak. Very, very weak these first two years. If I do not have the lead on you, you are getting insta-cut. Steve Archie knew he was never going to play anyway. It's a good decision there. We do have the lead on everybody else though, which is a bit of a problem because our points are maxed. Uh, nobody in the top 10, unfortunately. But we do have a five-star athlete, Antoine Moore. We got some wide receivers here. Okay, this is looking juicy. Quarterback Tremaine Bryant. Two defensive ends. Love it. Four-star strong safety, far and few in between there. 640 squat, OJ Rivera. Okay, that's not bad. 6'7", 290. Would like him to be above 300 pounds, but another wide receiver. Okay, this is, this is really, really good. We've turned this class around almost instantaneously. The problem is I'm looking for a bit more defense here. 
you're a little bit less than I would like, I'll still pick you up if you are a cornerback. I've learned to be a lot more accepting of the uh, the three stars. Normally, I used to almost be an elitist when I would look at them. But now, it's like, you know, if you're decent, I'll give you a crack. You never know what you can turn out to be. Another four-star quarterback. This guy's a bit of a pocket passer. I would like that to go with a pro-star offense. We finally snag another middle linebacker there, another linebacker in general. We're nearly done here, maxing out the board. More defense, please. Three more defensive gems, and I'll be happy. Decent center. Okay, I can make an exception there. And we've got another defensive end. Potential defensive tackle. Gaining by over 700 for majority of these players, which is good. That means I can put nothing but five points on them, essentially. I'm not going to be pursuing these guys all that hard. David Collier has gained a lot of attention from Iowa State, so we'll keep the 700 on there. And let's see what we got in terms of scouting. Dan Jude, not going to go up. There we go. Got a bit of a gem. In Chase Martin. What else are we looking at? Matt Coleman going up to a 77. That's so far our best player. Zach Cook going up to an 80 overall. One of the better gems probably in the class. Really good excel. Really good speed. Doesn't have the finesse, but look at that block shedding. 87 block shedding. Not to mention that with that speed and excel and 76 man coverage, oh, he will be able to do some damage in the Big 12 for sure. Definitely a coverage linebacker for sure dale calhoun going up to a 76 not bad all right let's go ahead and again get these scholarships out the way zach cook is definitely going to headline this class for sure i think we have one five star on the board here i think it might have been the bloke right at the top is he a wide receiver play rec is at 86 6 1 250 jeez he's got 76 power move 84 finesse Hold on a second, is this guy another linebacker, 61250? Okay, so our number one guy, so we got multiple linebackers in here. Jamal Medlock as well, Zach Cook has to get 700. Would like to get a, a defensive end at a minimum. For now, we'll get the O-line. First game of the season, 40 to 21, that's a good sign. So I noticed that none of them were quarterbacks. We might as well, we gotta get somebody to at least redshirt here. I don't think any of the athletes that we found turned out to be quarterbacks. They didn't. Okay. Dale Calhoun or Stefan Anderson. Both really solid players. 85 Excel, 70 speed, 80 block shedding, 82 power move. Oh, this is a tough one. They're pretty balanced. I'm going to go with the more balanced player though, which is Stefan Anderson. We really went all out on defense, I would say. Do have a couple offensive players scattered throughout, but... You know, we're getting our safeties, our linebackers, our cornerbacks, all that stuff done early. We only got 100, so we might as well go into Tremaine Bryant. And we do have some visits as well. Let's bring him in versus Houston. We do have Oklahoma on the schedule. I didn't even peep that. That must be a rivalry game, I'm assuming. Kansas and Oklahoma. Can't imagine that being all too competitive. But uh, either way, yeah, we do have Oklahoma on the schedule, unfortunately for us. UCF just joining the Big 12. We're playing on the road, and it's going to be a three-point loss. I would really like to go eight and four, ideally. So I don't think that's going to make us go up to a four star. But even if we could just maintain our three star, I'd be happy. And it all starts with these games right here. Yes, we can beat Rice. Yes, we can beat whoever. That's what I'm talking about. 59 to seven against Houston. And we had some people visiting. So if you don't commit after that, what's wrong with you, mate? Okay, just with 100 points, we got the lead on Tremaine Bryant. Not bad at all. Already got a pretty decent class here. I mean, it's not great. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Is there anybody else that I can pick out that would make a difference? I would like William Alston. I don't think we need 700, though. That's a bit excessive. Let's chill with 350 to start out. Dominique, we almost got the lead on him. What is Brent Patterson, though? A running back. Okay, he's a decent running back at that. I'll go 300. I think that's a good ultimatum there. Win over BYU. Okay, so we're putting these new schools in line. Showing him that Kansas is not going away. Ooh, that's a close loss. Only by seven there. So we're putting up a fight with Oklahoma. I think I must be in the mindset where I'm thinking back to that Puka Williams Kansas rebuild. And they were bad. Like Kansas at the time were really, really bad. Now they must be a lot better and I'm not giving them enough credit. We kind of have like a moral code now where we're allowed to go after low lock cheese. We're only allowed to add players in week three. So, for example, if we were to sign everybody on the board right now and have nobody here to go after, I'm not allowed to go into low lock cheese. Kind of like a, a mutual understanding, I guess. It keeps it refreshing. It makes it definitely a bit more difficult. And it doesn't mean we're going to be overpowered by year five. It's going to be a bit more of a steady increase opposed to a massive power spike. 
But yeah, no, so far it looks like we pretty much have everybody here. Not bad, Zach Cook officially signing as a Jayhawk. Again, I just have to have a geezer at this guy. I don't think I'm going to be redshirting all that much. This isn't a five-year rebuild. My goal, a bit more than five years, I'm thinking, depending on how much we improve, really. Let's bring everybody in versus Cincinnati. Now that I know that we're a bit better than I thought, I reckon we could probably give Cincinnati a run for their money. We're going to get a very close win over Baylor. The difference there might have very well been a safety. We blew Cincy out 41-7. to It wasn't even close. We even got a win over ranked Oklahoma State. I would not be surprised if we went 10-2 to finish out this season. Going to be a massive loss to Kansas State as well. Surprisingly, a team that did really well in March Madness. So I don't know who we played in our bowl game, but we got pumped. Really hard to say where Kansas is right now. It's either we're really, really dominant, like we smash the lesser teams, and then we get absolutely destroyed by the upper echelon. Charbonnet from UCLA. I hope I pronounced that right. He's going to win the Heisman. Still got a couple of blokes here. First team All-American bit as well. So we are safe for now. We only require seven wins per season. Both quarterbacks with the exact same rating. Very interesting. 27 touchdowns, six picks. The Jalen Daniels is no joke. Only a junior as well. That's really going to help us uh, in the long haul while we get set up. Two sophomore running backs. Both of them played phenomenal. You love to see averages over four from both running backs. Remember, we want to establish the run. We are in that pro-style offense, so that is going to help out a ton. On second thought, we might be doing a little bit of red shirting. Malcolm Lee. Wow, senior with eight and a half sacks. No joke interceptions wow kobe bryant as a sophomore had seven picks he didn't leave any picks for anybody else i mean a lot of people got one but bryant over here was seven dt's transferring to houston so he's going to an in-conference rival now that i look at it though a lot of the players that we are losing are kind of in that mid 80s to high 70s you hate to see him go three defensive tackles are leaving and we got a fourth a fourth graduating in fact and one's transferring so we are not going to have any defensive tackles next season. We just lost five of them. We lost the backup to our backups. All of a sudden, I'm leaning towards Rocky Peterson because we really need a defensive tackle slash defensive end. There is a quarterback up here as well, but I know that we have a freshman on the roster who didn't transfer, funnily enough. He's not going to be great. He might be like a high 80 by that final year, but that's enough to give us a little bit of breathing room here. A Rocky Peterson, I need it. I'm going to go the O-lineman. He's not that great, but again, that'll be a, probably like an 89 overall that senior season. If we redshirt him, he'll be like a 94. So, survey says that is a top 5 class. Forget top 25. Wowzers. All right, Kansas coming out the gate on fire here. It was actually the second ranked class. We got one 5-star. We, we got the second best class with only one 5-star, which is really good effort. We do go up to a 4-star prestige as well, so that's only going to help us next season. 15 three stars, eight four stars, one five star. So we're up here with the big dogs with only one five star. I mean, there mustn't have been a lot of five stars because a lot of these blokes don't have any. I mean, USC got two, Bama got two, Texas got none. Ohio State got no five stars. Damn, okay. Uh, who do we have over here at Athlete? We got Antoine Moore. That was our five star. A defensive end or a linebacker. So we'll have to come back to that. I think he might have to slot in on the defensive line. The quarterback, we actually look decent. I do not like Ethan Vasco. He's a real player, so I apologize, Ethan. If you are watching this, I know you're not, but still. I can't have you starting a quarterback. We need to get a quarterback this year. Running back, we're good for the next two years. No fullback. Receivers should be decent. Some junior tight ends, so we're good there. Would like to start working on that this season. We lost a bunch of D linemen, but we signed a bunch of D linemen too. Check this out. We have a freshman DT. So let's go ahead and move Coleman over to DT. So we have two freshman defensive tackles. We got a freshman right end and we got a freshman left end. We even have backups here. So that all of a sudden rules out our athlete turning into a defensive lineman. I think I am going to redshirt this year. Probably not next year, but this year for sure. So we're going to redshirt Zach Cook, and we are going to move Antoine Moore over to middle linebacker as well. So by year five, we're going to have more than likely 299 middle linebackers. Never know, Antoine Moore might even move over to left or right outside linebacker, depending on our depth, really. No preseason ranking for us. I am completely fine with that. 
So yeah, let's go ahead and redshirt all of our freshmen. This is the only year that we're going to redshirt, though. There might be another year in the future somewhere down the line. I just don't think any of our true freshmen are going to be starting, so there's really no point. I know we have a left tackle that probably would have started, but we're up to a four-star, so in technical terms, we kind of got a freebie year here. By a freebie year, I mean we can just go ahead and recruit for the foreseeable future. And even if we do go really bad this season, we only can drop down to a three-star. So we're back where we started. Central Michigan dub. Duke, I'm expecting a dub there. We go down to a B-plus strength of schedule. Yeah, it's looking rough. If we are going to make a natty, we're going to have to go 12-0. I also know that some of these players are going to transfer that we redshirted, but part of the job you know it's a sacrifice that i'm willing to make now as a four star let's see if we can do some damage here not looking like we have really anything we'll get a fullback outside linebacker sure we got a couple more outside line we got a bunch of outside linebackers okay cornerback maybe this is the year that we find some three star gems this many outside linebackers on the board we're destined to get a good three-star gem really good guard there this is a really good three-star class i'm not complaining about this at all okay we have too many outside linebackers let's not go od on it get a tight end there as well need a tight end all right so let's see we have no four stars purely three-star board here so not expecting a whole bunch Dwayne bell looks decent we got a three-star gym hawaii a m has themselves a all ncaa first team an all-american kobe bryant for us up to a 94 as a junior absolute stud i did notice we had one preseason all-american i'm like i bet you that's that cornerback that got seven picks and it was kansas state up to a 90 baylor up to a 90 we're in 91 91 93 and 90 okay so we're right up there with the bala bars Got a bit of mix of everything. Remember, none of these players turned out to be that amazing. A little cheese again is going to have to bail us out. As a four-star, it's going to be a little bit easier. I was expecting when we became a four-star to at least have one or two four-stars available to us. But that's not going to be the case. First game of the season, it's going to be another dub. Now, we are going to get tremendously worse this season. Our quarterback, somebody's a senior. And I'm pretty sure it's the quarterback. I don't care if he's great, average, whatever. If it's a 73, I'll take it, mate. Already four and six have been signed. We got a 15% athlete who runs a 458. 61212, definitely looking like a running back prospect, even with the 458 speed. Uh, what else we got? We got a four-star quarterback in Bell. A five-star quarterback. Forget Bell. He's off the board now. Jermaine Thomas, six foot seven, two fifty. Golly. We need some wide receivers for the future. We got an athlete, another running back, who I'm gonna take off the board. Another outside linebacker. Okay, so we're stacked at outside linebacker. Dude, forget that. We have been secretly pursuing cornerbacks too. We did redshirt a couple of safeties too. So six foot two wide receiver runs a four five two. We will take it. Finally, I see a running back prospect I like. The power, even at under 200 pounds. 72 cornerback. Okay, just setting ourselves up for the future here. We do not need defensive tackles. And we are maxed just like that. I low-key do want the fullback. There's a lot of schools interested in him, funnily enough. All right, so these are our low-lock participants for the year. Instantly a quarterback with a Derek Stewart. Jermaine Thomas, going to remain an 80 overall. Doesn't really have the accuracy that I would want. But 86 throw power, really good scrambling stats. I kind of would prefer a pocket passer here. But, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I will take what I can get. We have another quarterback here. 82 carrying, a bit slower, so maybe a bit more of a pocket passer threat. So not bad at all. We do have a couple of options here at quarterback. I think I'll pick up both of them and kind of reevaluate come uh, position changes because you never know. Right up until position changes, I haven't officially made up my mind yet. We are starting to see a couple of pipeline bonuses now too, with Texas, which is really good. Massive recruiting potential in Texas, as you can imagine. So the fact that they're a pipeline, amazing. Jermaine Thomas is an 80 though. This is one of those situations where raw talent is just better. I would like the other guy for the more pocket passer potential, but when you get an 80 overall and it's almost a gimme that you can sign him, you can't disagree with that. Unfortunately for him, 52 carrying. Kind of why I prefer pocket passes because they're not going to scramble, so carrying isn't that much of a threat. He has 89 elusiveness, 81 agility, can really outspeed a lot of the players in college football, but with 52 carrying, 
How many fumbles is this bloke gonna have? A lot of really good linebackers. It's like, dude, I can't go wrong, but at the same time, we're gonna have to go Brandon Shaw, though. 78 overall quarterback. 79 play rec, can play man end zone. This very well might even become a free safety. Would be better suited as a strong safety, in my opinion, because he does have 81 press, so definitely could jam the running back in the backfield. Ah, uh, from Louisiana, LSU is on the board. What is their bonus? So that's the only question. They have a 360 bonus, which I'm not surprised at. All right, we'll, we'll just give it a crack, mate. That's all we can really do. We are going to unlock Insta Commit. Okay, so once we get that the three star, our strategy changes a little bit. But for now, we are happy to rock out with one out of three Insta Commit. Not really going to apply it this season for obvious reasons. No point even taking a 5% chance. Cornerback, hopefully we can get in that battle. I really need him. Only a 170 bonus. Bit of a yikes. He's also an, an amazing... Okay, I got to get Derek Stewart. I didn't even realize 85 play rec, 85 pursuit, 85 man, 85 zone, 83 press. It is so rare. 92 elusiveness. This guy is definitely our kick returner slash punt returner for five years. Got a couple of players for visits. I'm thinking we can beat UCF this year. We beat them on the road last year. I'm only assuming it's fair that we verse them at home this year. So let's see what happens. Another big win over Houston. We've outscored them, what, 100 to 21 over the last two years? Houston is not ready for prime time. Okay, so we did have some visits in week six. We are currently, are we four or five and oh? Regardless, I think we're going to be ranked here. We're 5-0, so we are ranked 17. I didn't even peep, but we are B+, plus, A-B+. Minus B plus, dropping the third most points, which is very interesting. I would go out on a limb and say we're dropping the third most points, but we are definitely dropping the most points as a pro-style offense. There's just no shot. No pro-style offense, at least in the game, drops that many points. And that hasn't been against bad competition either, by no stretch. I am expecting another win over Oklahoma State. We did beat them last year. They were ranked last year. I'm a little bit worried about that road Oklahoma game, which I think is going to be our first potentially only loss of the season. We're going to beat Cincinnati, so 6-0. It is going to be a win. <laughs> All right. Wow, we beat Oklahoma State 35-7. to So we are 7-0, and and I think our schedule definitely gets a little bit easier from here on out. This has potential natty written all over it. When we did do our Kansas rebuild with Puka Williams, I couldn't even sniff eight wins. I think our best season was seven and five. So we're already beating that right now. We're ranked six, we're eight and oh. I guess Kansas State would be our biggest rival. I'm sorry, I don't know that much about Kansas as a football program. In-state rivalry, everything like that. You know how it goes. Yeah, I, we'll go to the Kansas week. I'm curious to see how we match up against them. So we got BYU, then we got ranked, they're ranked 10 as well. Of course they would have to be ranked 10. Well, the good news is, if we beat ranked 10 Kansas State, then we should be going to a national championship. Very underwhelming win against BYU. We're really nailing home that Big 12 no defense thing, aren't we? It's always a high scoring game in the Big 12. Jermaine Thomas, that's good. So we got our quarterback of the future. We're ranked three, bro. We're in a spot where we might not even have to do a 14 playoff. I know you guys say do a 14 playoff, but if we're rank one or two, it just seems like such a waste of time, doesn't it? So let's get a look at what Kansas State is doing. We are the better team. It is very close, though. It may not look like it, but this game is a lot closer than you might think. Same offense. We are barely better on defense. Sunflower Showdown. Pretty lame name. I don't know where that comes from. Please. Yes, it's going to be a dub. We are now one and one versus our rival in the Sunflower Showdown. We are significantly better than Iowa State. Who do, who's the last game? Oh, we got Baylor, bro. Well, that pretty much ends it right there. I don't think we're going to beat Baylor on the road. Crazier things have happened. Or am I just underestimating this team so much again? I'm not really sure. It could be a bit of both. Are we kind of done here in terms of recruiting? I guess I can just try and cuck other people. Like Wyoming, I don't want them getting him. I don't want him, but I don't want Wyoming getting him. Okay, so Iowa State, they are ranked. It is a road game. Why do we have so many road games? Regardless, 11 and 0. Before we play this last game, let's go see what the top 25 is looking like. I'm expecting Ohio State... Alabama and somebody from the Pac-12. Probably USC or probably Oregon would be my guess. We're still ranked four, so they're really not budging here. We have North Carolina, Alabama, Ohio State. So I was wrong on the Pac-12 thing. It's a really tough top four. 
I don't believe North Carolina should be rank one, though. I mean, who have they versed on their schedule? Georgia. I mean, they got a good schedule. I'm not going to lie. I think they probably have the worst out of the four of us, though. Jeez, we went so well this season. We nearly maxed out our coach. Okay, last game. Don't even think about it. With a better team, they got a better defense. Let's just see what happens here. Oh my, it's so... All of these games are near heart attacks. We are going to get it done though. We are going to finish season two 12 and 0. I didn't even rebuild the team. I just joined a natty winning team. Kind of crazy. Remember when we did the Lamar Tate experiment and Michigan State went 13, 14 and 0? What, what is going on right now? I don't underestimate UCF. I just know that on these rosters, they're not the best. You know what I mean? Not trying to crap on them, nothing like that. We are still ranked four, which means Bama, North Carolina, and Ohio State all have not lost yet. And North Carolina has North Carolina State, so there is a chance that we jump into the top three here. I would preferably like to be top two. But let's jump into it. It's going to be a dub against UCF, so 13-0. It's looking like a four-team playoff here, boys. Wow, our quarterback finished second on Heisman voting. We are going to jump up to rank three, so my guess is that North Carolina lost. We also won coach of the year. UNC did lose. They dropped from first down to fifth. NC State jumps up to fourth. North Carolina should have dropped down a bit further than that, in my opinion. All right, four-team playoff it is. Yeah, we got Ohio State. All right, this is going to be interesting. I think Bama will probably wash North Carolina State here. We've definitely beat teams up to Ohio State's level before. I just, I don't know. Okay, we're going to actually open up scoring here. We're going to score again. Our offense... Oh my goodness, this is pure heart right here. 24 to seven heading into the sheds. I do not want to underestimate Ohio State though. This is a unbelievably good football team. They are driving on us. They turn the ball over. Big run on conservative, please. I am not trying to turn this ball over. We only have 282 yards. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. What in the world? Here come the timeouts. Tight end angle. This play already has two out routes on it. And they're not really respecting the receivers. Fourth and one. Uh, we're going to go for this. There's a national championship on the line. And if we do punt this, then they're going to win. This is a really nice playbook. I mess with this playbook a lot. There goes the first down. That is game. Not going to lie to you guys, coming into this game, seeing that we were 91 and that they were 99, uh, really made me think Ohio State was going to win 48 to 21 or something like that. Luckily for us, defense gets a turnover right at the end of the game. And we're going to win 24-21. So we are going to a national championship year two. I did not even tell you guys the best part. The fact that we are now 13, for, sorry, 14 and 0. It really doesn't even matter anymore if we win the national championship. Yes, it would be good for the sake of it. Uh, but ultimately speaking, we are going up to a five-star prestige regardless of if we win this game or not. So that is only going to make this so much better uh, next year for recruiting and the year after that and so on and so forth. Alabama wins. Oh, man, that guy's annoying. This would be a miracle if we could win this. We scored in two plays. Unfortunately, though, the momentum is going to stop there. And it's already looking like Bama's going to run away with this one. Okay, maybe not. 21 all. Don't want to get ahead of myself here. 28 21. Bama is going to score. There's three minutes left in this game. My goodness. How is Kansas doing this? Daniels is really having the game of his life right now. Look at this. We're driving on him. First and goal. Second and goal. We're in. You just have to hold him out for a minute and a half here. Bama is foot on the pedal right now. Bama is going to score. If only we had that guy that we redshirted. Oh, man, he would have been a difference maker right now. Just try and get as many yards as you can. Skinner! Down to the 35. All right. That was really good defense by Bama. Doesn't get much better than that. Okay, we take those. Grim out of bounds. Who is Luke Grim? This guy's 150 yards in the natty. Mid coverage again. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. That should have been picked. I'm not even going to lie to you. Just need some yards. No timeout from Bama. I don't want this to mess up. So I'm going to call a timeout now. 42-yard kick. Are we going to see the Bama timeout? Let's get max distance here. Kick is up. And the kick is good from Kansas. We got a little cheeky squibber down the middle. Oh, man, my heart is pumping. 
My heart don't pump this much often. 83, isn't it? Out? Oh, that was not meant to go to him. One second left. So just letting you guys know that this is easily an achievable throw right here. Easily. This is not a big throw with the game on the line. In terms of yardage. Look at that. All the way down in the end zone. That hurts. That really, really, really hurts. Daniel's in the top five for passing. Really good season from him. Neil, only a junior. Remember, both these running backs are juniors. Up the average from four to five plus. Luke Grimm, 1,500, 1,600 yards, bro. He did a lot of that in the natty as well. 103 tackles to our outside linebacker. Couple of records, I believe that season as well yeah we break a couple of passing records we break a receiving record right there too all right so players leaving Devin Hill trying to declare need you to come back buddy left tackle going to transfer that's fine Jamal Medlock going to transfer not the best we do lose a really good left tackle there but still we're not losing a lot of people we are bringing back a large majority of the national championship contending team to mention as a five star now Hopefully, recruiting is a little bit easier. We get our first transfer, it's Paul Powell, out of Missouri. Not really a lot to go after here, is it? Jeez, I guess it's going to be Nate Riley. If we're good enough to go for a national championship, then I, I don't think a 63 is really going to help us get there. At least, get, let me get the 70 plus. Top 10 class, not going to be no top 5 like last season. Two 5 stars, 5 4 stars. We still signed 24 players. Surprised that was this far down just outside of the top five and that is a really good back-to-back -back class for kansas now derek stewart i remember we signed a five-star quarterback i think that we redshirt jermaine thomas and i think that we finish on jermaine thomas i highly doubt he's going to transfer i mean he might you never know we got quarterback done we have running back done we have fullback done because we signed two of them signed three wide receivers here as well gonna need to get a tight end our left tackle left he transferred so o-line looking a little bit weaker than we would have liked but that's okay Ooh, it's kind of seems like a bit of a waste now though doesn't it because we have zach cook i would like zach cook to be a part of that final team so you know what i tell a lie we are not red shirting and we're gonna finish this rebuild when zach cook is a senior which means that our quarterback is going to be a true freshman starter so jermaine thomas when he's a senior, that'll be our last season here. But not bad. Our linebacking core is done. We got Brandon Shaw. I remember we signed him. We also got Stephen Presley. Cornerback is looking somewhat decent. I know we have two strong safeties. One of them's going to have to go to free safety. Safety is done. Cornerback is nearly done. Linebacker is done. Defensive line is done. We need to get O-line, tight end, wide receiver. Lit no, we don't even need wide receiver. Surprisingly, this is going. This is already more than I achieved in the other Kansas rebuild. We are going to be strong here again with Devin Neal. Looking really forward to seeing what he can do. Four average the first season, five average the second season. Maybe a six average. Wouldn't that be fun? Our tight end is done because we got Paul Powell and Jerome Bennett. Oh, no. Nah, <laughs> it's wraps. Tight end is done. So we just realistically need the O-line. Our left, we have a left tackle. I don't remember that bloke. We have two centers here. We have a right tackle. We have two right tackles. Zach Cook combined with the quarterback we just signed for that final push is going to be one hell of an offensive leader and one hell of a defensive leader. Three more years of recruiting. We're going to start rank 10. This class right here has to be a banger. And as a five-star, genuinely expecting this to... I already don't even need to look. I know we're a five-star. Top 10 player, top five player has already been interested in us. It goes an O-lineman right there. All the O-linemen I can get, I'm going to be happy to scoop that up. There we go. We got a uh, four-star center there. Another fullback here. Not against picking up another fullback. Wow, a bunch of O-linemen are all of a sudden interested in Kansas. Remember that O-line is the only position we realistically need to recruit. Everything on top of O-line is just a bonus, really. Oh, we do have instant commit. I nearly just offered a scholarship like a goofball. Come on, we have three out of three. There we go. We got a fullback. It's not the one we wanted, but it's still a fullback. Really? Nobody else? Kind of cringe. 
I need the O lineman. Where's the good? We got Blake Greco. There was another O lineman that I really like. Carl Thomas. Corey Bush as well. Team need is only O lineman. Oh, it's a glorious day to be in Kansas. What a joke. <laughs> it's so easy. This would be a good tester game. Memphis is a really good school. So if we can get a massive win against them. Really? <laughs> really? 25 28? We got better, I would assume. It automatically begs the question now, did we just get lucky last year? I know we got a little bit lucky, but how lucky were we? So that's going to drop us down quite a bit. We're going to go down to 18. Our team isn't bad, though. We have a 97 offense. I think our defense only went on one, though. So not the best. Carl Thomas, this would be a massive pickup. No. Me and I get unlucky sometimes in this game. No insta-commits yet. We only need a handful of things. I will get some skill positions as well, just for the sake of it. There is a lot of quarterbacks. A running back wouldn't be bad, but I really would like, you know, like an 80 plus overall, which is more than likely not going to be the case here. Five-star athlete, we'll pick it up. Cody Jordan, a pocket pass. I mean, we still want to set Kansas up for the future. So let's just filter by O lineman here. 640 for Javon Washington. We take that. 620, we'll take that. Nothing at guard and nothing at center. Oh, yikes. I did see another tackle down here, though. Coley, 21% lock. Maybe we can make a play here. Oh, we added a couple of people for low lock. Okay. So Stallings looks like a quarterback, running back. Not bad, not bad. Outside linebacker, not going to be the best. Cody Jordan is decent. Javon Washington is up to a 77. How lame is that? <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is not what we were after. Oh, man, we're just going to have to go a couple more weeks here. Not the best start, considering we are a five-star powerhouse. Another loss. Another loss. Three losses back-to-back. -back. Since he is 0-4, so if we lose to them, it's just... It's, we're down terrible if we lose to them. This is all with a super good defensive coordinator as well, so you'd think that we'd be doing at least a little bit better than what we're doing. I mean, I didn't expect to go undefeated, nothing like that, but I, I did expect to go better than this. Just overall, not the best season for us. Uh, the first two seasons went so much better than this. 38-0. Okay, I was expecting to beat him, but not 38-0 beat him. That's a freaking blowout. It really is sickening how bad we've done. It's really, really bad. I would love to get Greco. I just can't get back in this battle. Super unfortunate. Though Greco is coming in... No, I don't think he is coming in for a visit. Nobody's coming in for a visit, in fact. Just need to go a little bit more here. We did have a straight 99 absolute monster at quarterback. In fact, did I even... I don't even think I started our quarterback. Let's go ahead and get Jermaine Thomas in there. Obviously, Vasco is not delivering. Big loss to Baylor, of course. Let's just continue the trend. So things don't look that much better with Jermaine at quarterback compared to Vasco. Wow. Four and eight. Very forgettable season for us. It's whatever. I'm just really worried that this might continue because I know we're really decent right now. The Big 12 is going to get better, hopefully in, what, three more years when we wrap this up. The Big 12 starts to fall off a little bit. I don't think Cincinnati will really be a problem. I don't think UCF will be a problem. Really just worried about Baylor and a little bit about Texas Tech. This season wouldn't bother me as much had we not lost to Alabama. Anyway, short two memory loss. Gotta get past it. Neil gonna break a bunch of records in his final season, which is glorious. We will check that out as well. Four and eight. Wow, what a roller coaster. Eight and five, 14 and one, four and eight. You wouldn't even guess that this was practically the same team. Vasco, I'm not even gonna look at the stats if Vasco's putting up those numbers. Now, you know what? That's disrespectful. I gotta see what the running back put up in his final season. I highly doubt we have a six average here. We actually did. Six average for Devin Neal. Daniel Highshaw with 6.1 average. So we went from four average to five to six. A little bit weak. Would like to see it a little bit better. Kobe Bryant with three interceptions. Seven for OJ Burrows. So unfortunately for us, going to get significantly weaker here. Transfer. It's a running back. We signed a running back anyway. And we got Chris Tyson, who's 65 overall. He won't even start at FSU. So I don't know why he's bothering. But look at this. We are losing a lot of people. That's out of the way, though. So this next season might not be the prettiest either. But after that, it should really balance out. We should start, you know, approaching the top of the Big 12 again. I wonder with that many losses, are we even going to get better? That's the question. Our quarterback didn't transfer, so that's a monstrous dub for us. Staying loyal to the game plan. Need alignment, need all of it. Not by any stretch. Going to be a top 25 class, though. So don't get your hopes up. 
Really not expecting this to be a top 25 class. It is a top 25 class. In fact, it was the best class in the Big 12. It is going to add up to 13th. We drop down to a four-star prestige. If the offense gets worse, I don't really mind, but I need that defense to really pick it up here, you know? Zach Cook should be a 90 overall. I'm hoping for his, what is this, going into his junior season that they're going to look a little bit different for us. Hopefully a little bit better. The quarterback is looking good. Obviously, Jermaine is going to get the start here again. Running back could be a little bit better. I'm a little bit worried about that. Remember, we don't need our running backs to be 99s or anything like that. It would help. But even if they're high 80s, as long as we can establish the run, that's really the goal here. Tanaka Scott, final season. Okay. Tight end is looking decent. Uh, O-line is looking... <laughs> We are so screwed, fellas, at O-line. I really did try my best here. Just not looking that pretty. At least our D-line is going to be insane. We're going to have a lot. We're going to have a lot of depth, a lot of strength there. Linebacker is also going to be amazing. It's very rare that we get a really, really solid linebacking core. It's quite rare that we get a really good defense in general. So as much as there's still a lot of work to do, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. This is really going to tell us all we need to know. Training results. I don't care about Vasco. Get him off my screen. So as a sophomore, Jermaine Thomas up to an 87. So junior, let's say around 92, give or take. Senior, 97, give or take. And then with the coordinator boost, that's a 99 quarterback. Now running back, 80 overall, 76. So we should see them in the 90s. Really good sign for us. Even our fullbacks should be in the 80s receivers oh man we're gonna have to do a lot with less you know what i mean we're really gonna be under the pump that final season but i genuinely think this team can get it done we are kind of banking on the big 12 being a little bit worse than maybe what you guys are thinking so that kind of puts you guys where i'm at mentally though with this rebuild we do need the big 12 to fall off a little bit but around that sixth seventh year that should happen uh, there's no injuries in our rebuild so having the injury trait really does nothing for us that looks a lot better. So we are not going to be ranked in season four. Ohio, TCU, UCF. We have Memphis again. They beat us last year. Our schedule is only B though. So is that because it's genuinely not that good or because the Big 12 is starting to fall off? Oh man, we really don't even need to recruit here, but I will anyway. We definitely won't be recruiting next season though. That's for sure. Again, if we can just get some five-star O-linemen, that would be awesome. Okay, so Terry Vaughn. That's not bad. It's looking like we do have some O-linemen here. Kicker. That'll be really good for us. I don't think we have a good kicker. The D-line is definitely done. The defense in general is done. It would be nice to get, you know, an 80 overall cornerback, but I don't think that's going to happen. Only seven people. Bit cringe, but we will take it. Now, let me just double check here in the O-line department. You know what? We'll go after some of the big dogs. You never know. Uh, if we put enough of them on, the chances are that we will get one of them here. So there we go. We had about eight on the board there. And even, like I said, even if we can just get one of them, everybody is going down that we genuinely added. The kicker is really nice. Here go the alignment. 78 to start out. 79, 78. Okay. So we're pretty much going all out on these alignment here. Cannot go wrong with any of them anyway. I am expecting, well, it's hard to say because we lost a lot of players. So I'm not sure if the defense is going to get worse here. I'm guessing that overall the team's going to be a bit worse, but I don't think our defense could have been much worse. Then again, uh, allowing Ohio to drop 28 points doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence here. We are B+, B+, B+. So our offense went from 97 to 88, but our defense went up from 88 to 90. Five-star running back, that would help us out quite a bit, actually. I will get a DT just for depth, just in case, worst case scenario kind of stuff. Four-star tight end, that would not be the worst thing in the world. Let me see if I can find a cornerback. That at least might be the best we can hope for here. Nothing in cornerback from the looks of it. Maybe there's an athlete that's a cornerback. As for now, though, not a lot we can do. Have to go a couple more weeks at a minimum to see what we can do with these O-linemen. We get a shot at three of them. There is a pretty decent chance that we can get an instant commit. And considering that we're only 88 overall, not a bad loss to TCU, who was heavily favored to win that game. Wow, none of the O linemen really want to come here. Dropping down for 600, even though we invested 700 points. We can break back in this battle. That Thank goodness for that. Not going to be able to get Corey Collins. Barely leading on Hodge, but uh, again, I don't really want a 66. Gaining on Jeff Brown somehow, dropping out on Kevin Parker, 
dropping out on Danny Mills. Yeah, a lot of the athletes turning out to be absolute studs. Wow. The tight end, of course, is just going to fall off the face of the planet. Let me go ahead and get Carlos Bailey. He looks like a running back. 6'5", 212. That is a big-ass running back. Okay, good news is we got him in for some visits, so it's going to be a week nine. If we can just survive to week nine, though, that's the problem. The expectations aren't that high, though. We only need two offensive linemen at max. Four and four. Better than we could have hoped for. Can I just please get a single insta commit, okay? It's been like 50... Okay, thank you. See, you just got to get angry at the computer. Mm, give me another insta commit or I'm going to get so mad and never play this game ever again. Happy with it right now. Come on. No Paul Smith. So our class right now at this point, midway through the season, is an outside linebacker, a kicker, and a 61 overall tackle. We're so trash. Like, it's not even funny how bad we are. We can get them in that whatever it is, the recruiting at the end. It should be good. That should be really good for us. The question is, can we make it that far? We're just going to have to go ahead and go all the way to the end of the season here. The goal was to get two offensive linemen, two decent O-linemen. And right now we're at 161 overall. All right, we're going to get some more signings. Of course, in the positions we don't need, we do get a 71 right tackle. And we don't win a game for the remainder of the season. So again, we are 4-8. and eight. It couldn't be much worse. It really could not be that much worse. This is what happened in the last rebuild. But imagine we never went to an Addy. And imagine we never went positive. Exactly like the last rebuild that I did. Vasco set a new record. <laughs> he beat Bama and Mac Jones. The thing to remember is that he only played three games. Our security is low. We're going to be down to a three-star score here as well. Thomas finally getting the keys to the offense. I kind of went 50-50 again. 12 touchdowns, 7 picks. That is not great. 200 yards per game. No wonder we're losing so many games. Derek Stewart, only a sophomore, 1,200 yards. So he's only going to get better. He had 10 touchdowns as well. Tanaka Scott, final season, 972. For next season and beyond, it's going to be all up to these guys down here. Didn't have amazing seasons, but I will be keeping an eye, a very big eye, on our receiving for next season. Look at that. It is only five graduation that's like best case scenario right there do we get any transfers maybe potentially we got it no i'm declining this so the question is did any of the o-linemen make it this far because i just need somebody right here come on a good o-lineman there is none uh let's just go into paul smith whatever there's no way that was a, a top 10 class Two five stars, six foot. That is so cap. I've never seen more cap in my entire life. By no stretch was that a top 10 class. They're just trying to make us feel good at this point. So for another season, we're pretty much going to have maxed out coordinators. Charlie Weiss could just, you know, get a couple. Well, I guess we got to win games to level up, don't we? And we haven't been doing a lot of winning. I am expecting a bowl game this year. I'm not expecting four losses, but I'm also not expecting 10 wins. Jermaine Thomas up to a 95 overall, only one behind Vasco now. 90 awareness plus coordinator boost. That is going to be the biggest difference right there, just the awareness. What is he up to, actually? We haven't really had a look. We've been neglecting to look. Wow, not really that good. But then again, Vasco only has 79 throw power, so incredibly cringe having him as the starter. Running back is decent, nearly into the 90s. Fullback is going to be good for extra blocking. Wide receiver is good. Tight end is good. The O-line, to be fair, is not the best, but it's not the worst I've ever seen either. The D-line is all very close to 90s. We even have a 92 defensive tackle there. Both middle linebackers are 90 plus now, so that is super good for us. Cornerback's up to a 93. He's going to leave, though. Okay, not bad at all. So the schedule is a B now. Wow, that means that we must have seen some teams fall off. Conference outlook this year is going to be amazing. I cannot wait to jump into that. First of all, let's make sure that the computer is ready to go in terms of rebuilding. It's the last year recruiting anyway. It says we need one guard. I'm sure the computer can manage to sign a freaking guard. Just one of them. So Baylor's a 91. They haven't fallen off. It looks like everybody's around that 91. We're a 95. Our defense is 97. Oh, Cincinnati fell off as well. 90. So nobody's really above a 90. We are the best. We're, we're literally the best. Best team in the Big 12, bar none. And we're only going to get better this season. We have barely anybody leaving. The last thing I want to do is just see what we are overall wise. Oh, wait, I just saw that. 
We insta committed somebody. That's awesome. A, A minus, A plus. So we hit the nail on the head right there. Uh, hopefully we can have a good season. All things point to us having a good season considering we don't have a team on the schedule that we are not better than. Maybe we have Oklahoma. They probably are better than us. Maybe not actually. We are that far in the future where they might have fell off. So theoretically, we should be looking at a 10 plus win season right here. Get up to a four-star prestige before heading into our final season. We are four and one. We did lose to Texas Tech. I did tell you they will be kryptonite team and the trend is going to continue here in Kansas. However, this is the only team that realistically we should lose to. Oklahoma is an A plus, A and A plus. So they are the better team, even though on paper, Oklahoma's better. We're better statistically. We want to go to a natty. We're going to have to beat them. Let's see how we do this year, though, Oklahoma. It is going to be a monstrous loss, 52 to 21. Kansas going to Kansas. We do pick up a massive win against Oklahoma State, though. They were ranked 10, and that was on the road. So not only are we going to beat Kansas State on the road, uh, 31 to 9, we're also going to get a big win against Baylor. So this season, if it's any insight into next season, we are considerably better. We are beating pretty much every Big 12 team. We've only lost to Texas Tech. And we lost to Oklahoma, but still could not be happier from going four and eight for two seasons in a row. The change that has happened so quickly, incredibly positive. So we are going to finish this season 10 and two in the regular season. We actually made the conference championship, which is really cool. So no natty for us this season, but we are gearing up for next season when it really matters. We are going to lose anyway to West Virginia. We're going to have to be careful because if we do go 12 and 0 next season, I am going to be a little bit cautious in the conference championship, depending on who we verse, of course. We're going to win the Cotton Bowl 49 to 45 contract extension. So luckily, we almost got fired there, but uh, that last season kind of changed it around a little bit. I am quite interested in the stats. What is going on? Oh, Jermaine Thomas didn't start the whole season again. 28 touchdowns, three picks, though, so very, very good. I kind of feel like we have to up it a little bit so we pass it a bit more. I mean, our running backs, even though they're not the best, are absolutely killing it out there. Receivers not doing the whole bunch, but a lot of them did really well. So I'm going to back it. I'm, it's not ideally where I would like it, but I'm setting the offense up where I think Kansas would do it in real life. So whilst I don't think it's the best for our success, and whilst I don't think it's where I would want it to be, I think it's where Kansas would do it in real life. So I'm going to have to cop that loss on the chin, unfortunately. The only players we are losing are a cornerback, our backup quarterback, which doesn't matter, and Purdy. But overall, I mean, the jump that we're going to get is going to be is so insane. This is our last training results. We have to make an impact here. Quarterback is good. Running back is good. Wide receiver looks steady. Tight end looks good. It's just the O-line that I'm a little bit worried about here. Cornerback looks really solid. Safeties are going to be around that 90 mark as well. So it's not by any stretch the best team that we could have had. But do you remember right at the beginning I said, we don't have the advantages of Alabama, Tennessee, or them schools. We have to do more with less. And I kind of feel like we've achieved that on a really good level here. We do have one genuine 99. He also has 99 awareness, but that would have mattered. But 98s, 93s, etc. with the coordinator boost, only going to get that much better. Again, not exactly where I would want to be, but it looks good. Let's get a look at Zach Thomas's stats here. The 94 Excel is still a coverage linebacker. 90 tackling, 98 hit power, 87 power move, 99 block shedding. Wow. Uh, so he is insane. 89 play rec, 90 pursuit, 81. This might be the greatest linebacker I've ever had. Zach Cook really is that dude. It does not get much better than Zach Cook. 74 overall. We even have some decent uh, fullbacks. So we are going to start this season ranked 10. That is very high praise. We are up to a B-plus schedule. Oklahoma is in week eight. The last time we were behind a 99 quarterback, we went 14-0 and 0 before losing in the natty. A-plus, A-plus, A-plus. So it could not be any better than this. We're straight 99s. Okay. So the team is set up. I just... Uh, please, can we win this season? Oklahoma is already ranked two. And even with a 99 defense, we are still letting in 20 points. Oh, I didn't even look at the conference outlook. All I saw was that we were 99 and got so excited. So we're 99, Oklahoma State's a 90, Bearcats are crap, Baylor fell off, Iowa State fell off, Kansas State kind of fell off. We waited it out just long enough. This is definitely our best opportunity right here to do anything. 
Big win over Houston. Let's keep the momentum. Okay, very uh, close win there against Cincinnati. Again, we are letting these schools that are 83 overall drop 31 points. You know, four plus touchdowns any given night. Is that because our defense is bad or is that because the Big 12 is just really that bad at defense? So they're B plus, so they are right around that 891 overall mark. 88 offense and defense are stacked. I just think that we are better, you know? We can get this win very easily. We should get this win very easily. Unfortunately, our OC and DC did fall off a little bit, but let's just go ahead and jump into it after this. Not really a lot to worry about, but it's gonna be a three point win against Oklahoma. A little bit worried about West Virginia. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Last time we matched up against them, we they beat us. And it's on the road. It's going to be another close win. 49 to 45. Somehow this Kansas team just managing to do enough to stay alive. If we were to re-simulate these games, I guarantee it'd be 50-50, mate. Even though it shouldn't be, it would be. K-State, our biggest rival. We are on our way to a natty. Easy win. Despite being 10-0, somehow we are rank 3. And it begs the question, Illinois and Miami of all freaking schools... Illinois is a one-star prestige. How can you give them rank one? Not only are they the worst team out of the undefeated teams, but they're one-star prestige. At least we're a four-star. I don't get it. I, <laughs> I don't know what they are on, but I'm assuming that they're going to lose here sooner rather than later. So we're going to pick up a massive win over Iowa State, and there's only one more game to go against the Bala Bars, one of our biggest rivals in this rebuild who we surprisingly have a very good record against another thing is i feel like we've versed everybody on the road i don't remember having like any home games it's gonna be at another blowout 12 and 0 we have a finalist for the heisman and we have texas tech of course me kryptonite team this i mean it shouldn't even have to look at it here this should be a dub it is gonna be a dub the game would have to be extremely petty to let texas tech beat us there even though the army kryptonite, there is a limitation as to how big that kryptonite can be. I ain't losing to no B minus teams. So Tom is going to finish third for the Heisman. We've won a Big 12 championship, which we have not done. We know we did win a Big 12 championship and we have Miami. Now this game should pretty much, I don't think it'll be a flood, but Miami is coming in A, A minus, A plus. So their defense surely would have been carrying them early in 93 offense though. Uh, we should be good enough to get the job done here. Let's go look at the season stats before we jump into it. So Mississippi State has an extremely pass heavy offense and we were second barely behind them. Jermaine Thomas, 34 touchdowns, four picks. This is a lock for the first round. We stuck to Kansas's strategy as well, which was a bit more run heavy, even though it's not what I would have liked. It paid off, 1400 yards for Derek Stewart, almost a seven average on 200 attempts. So Derek Stewart was definitely the MVP of the team, in my opinion. Uh, those kind of numbers are so unbelievable and so rare to get. He was basically a walking first down machine which is, if you can get that at any level in football, you're going to win a lot of games, which we obviously did. 1,100 yards for Justin Pollard. Didn't really do that much through the air, which is fine. Our blocking was really good. Sack numbers were really solid, so obviously our defense pulled their weight, considering we were a bit worried about them. But uh, not a lot to be worried about here, as Antoine Moore, as a senior, led the team in tackles. Zach Cook had 61 tackles, though, so both of them... Proven to be a problem for a lot of teams. The Daniel's going to break two records like we saw earlier. Grim breaking that record in the first Natty season. And Neil going to break three records. I would have expected maybe a seasonal record. Not an overall, but seasonal, yes. Anyway, we've worn our away jerseys the entire thing. I don't... I, I want to wear something different. Ooh, light blue. I've never seen this jersey before. It's actually kind of lit. Not only are we about to win our first national championship... Something I could not do in the last rebuild, but, but on top of that, uh, we've set Kansas up for the future too. Not great block in there. I could have done something to maybe a bit more. All right, so Miami is going to put points on the board. Wow, our offense is really struggling right now. Finally in the second quarter, putting points on the board. Jeez, we would really like to take the lead before half. I did not think Miami was going to give us such a battle here, but... I don't know. Let's see if we can do something on the return. Sure, it's not a really big kick. Dang, yeah, nothing going. I'm actually a really big fan of it. 
Might start trying it out a little bit. That is an absolute missile right there. Fuller gonna stiff arm his way down to the 40. Let me get out the pocket. I know he's not much of a scrambler. Oh, can I just get that out there? It's gonna be picked off. Ah, tried a little bit of a risky strategy there. Don't know if this guy's gonna take off. Is that a wide receiver screenplay? It is. Oh, he's fumbled it. Somebody jump on it. It's gonna be a safety. What, what a play. Miami is currently winning this game 10 to 9, but when you see plays like that, you can't help but think how much we really do outmatch Miami here. I guess we take the lead and we're going to believe in the defense here, but would have liked to have seen a bit more heart there. Fourth and 12, Miami cannot score on us. They got some cheeky points early on, but they have been struggling ever since. Miami scored on the first play, 57-yard run from their running back. Four minutes left to play in this one. Up by, down by six, not up by anything. See if Shaw can't get a nice return here. Don't really have the blockers for it. Shaw, though, with the agility, that's why I put him out there. Not a bad return. Got us a really good range there. I'm expecting a score. Third and six. It is going to be a first down. We are struggling. And we're going to take the lead. 19-18 with three minutes left in this one. Third and eight. And you got to think, Miami has to go for this. The punt really is not going to do anything for them. Across the middle. That's a freaking dot. Their running back has 194 yards. Wow, that is crazy. Got to trust the main coverage here. It's a pick by Zach Cook. He threw it right at him. No way. I was not using Zach Cook in crunch time. You can't be making those mistakes right there. Patterson, big gang. Uh, couldn't find a counter, but we're just trying to run out as much of the clock as we can here. In fact, let me change this up. Call a timeout. Okay, they're in man coverage. Pollard just gets enough room. And that right there, the corner route, is going to seal the deal. Well, boys, there were definitely some ups, some downs. And if you saw the last Kansas rebuild with Puka Williams, you are happy right now. Kansas should have two netties. We're not going to think about that. We are going to pick up the dub here. 19 to 18 win after the Zach Cook interception. And we are going to walk away with a national championship. Took a lot longer than I would have liked. Thought we would have been a lot more competitive. And a lot of times I didn't even think we'd make a natty. But even that safety, man, what a big play. We won the game by one point, and that safety was a big reason why. My goodness, what a rebuild. I love when it comes to a happy ending like that. But fellas, if you made it this far in the video, then you are the real MVP. Hope the rest of your day is awesome. And from me personally, I'm out. Peace. Sometimes I'm winning, can I breathe right underwater? Sometimes I'm winning, can I speak in outer space? Sometimes I'm winning, can I call upon a thunder?